So in type 2 reactions, antibodies are binding molecules on the surface of cells. In some instances, those antibodies, when they bind, they'll induce inflammation and membrane attack complex, the complement activation. But in some instances, antibody binding actually changes the activity of the cell. And this involves binding to receptors on the surface of cells. So in the case of a number of autoimmune disorders, the autoantigen is a receptor. Now, receptors are usually molecules found on the surface of cells, and when they engage with their ligand, they will signal into the cell and get that cell to do something. If an antibody is binding to a receptor, that can trigger something about that receptor firing. It can either um, mimic the ligand or it can block the ligand. So many autoantibodies act as agonists or they act as antagonists. If they act as agonists, when autoantibody binds the receptor, that might mimic a ligand binding and trigger signaling into the cell. In other instances, the antibody blocks the ligand from binding, and therefore the, you would say the antibody acts as an antagonist, inhibiting the signaling through that receptor. So in this video, we're going to cover um, each one of these possible scenarios in referring to autoimmune disorders. The first autoimmune disorder we're going to talk about is Graves' disease, which involves the thyroid gland. So I've drawn the cell from the thyroid gland, the thyroid epithelial cell, and hopefully you recall that the thyroid makes a hormone called thyroid hormone, sometimes referred to as T3 or T4. This hormone is secreted into the bloodstream and affects cells all over the body, it has many target cells, and this hormone is involved in regulating metabolism, truthfully, increasing metabolism, maybe increasing metabolic rate, heart rate, blood pressure, um, all sorts of things that uh, increase the metabolism. And we know that the thyroid um, is regulated via a hormone called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, which is generated and released by the anterior pituitary. So when the brain recognizes that our metabolism is too low, our temperature is too low, for example, TSH is released into the bloodstream and TSH travels throughout the body, but binds receptors on thyroid epithelial cells. So TSH binds the TSH receptor and that will signal into the thyroid cells to make and release thyroid hormone, thus increasing the met metabolic rate of the individual. So that's normal thyroid regulation in a nutshell. In individuals who suffer from Graves' disease, those individuals make an autoantibody, which binds to the TSH receptor. So there's a B cell that has a B cell receptor that just so happened to uh, undergo VDJ recombination, junctional diversity, such that the antigen binding site binds the TSH receptor. So what's going to happen here? In this instance, we know that autoantibodies that bind the TSH receptor, individuals who suffer Graves' disease, the antibody mimics the ligand. So the antibody acts as an agonist. The, a the antibody is mimicking the action of TSH. So if an individual has TSH receptors on the surface of their uh, thyroid cells, then this antibody will bind them and will signal into the cell just like TSH. So the TSH level could be very low in these individuals, but the autoantibody is binding the TSH receptor, which tr triggers signaling into that cell, and the cell produces thyroid hormone, a lot of it, all the time. So these individuals suffer from too much thyroid hormone production, also known as hyperthyroidism. So they have a number of symptoms, including uh, increased body temperature, um, tremors or trembling, insomnia, weight loss, all of these due to the overproduction of thyroid hormone, which is due to the production of antibodies that are binding the TSH receptor, triggering the signaling into the thyroid cell. In these individuals, there's a treatment, which is a reasonable treatment, and it actually doesn't involve the immune system. It involves destroying the thyroid with radioactive iodine. Iodine is a element that is used in the production of thyroid hormone. And so when an individual ingests radioactive iodine, concentrates in the thyroid gland, and the radiation destroys the thyroid the tissue. So individuals who are treated with radioactive iodine have their thyroid destroyed. So now the antibodies won't be doing anything. But won't the individual lack thyroid hormone? Sure.
but luckily thyroid hormone can be replaced um, using synthetic thyroid hormone as a prescription drug. So individuals who suffer Graves' disease, um, the common treatment is destruction of the thyroid and then just supplementing normal levels of thyroid hormone in medication. Another type 2 autoimmune disorder is uh, myasthenia gravis, and it is another type 2 disorder. And this involves signaling at the neuromuscular junction. So if you recall, in learning about signaling in neurons, so neurons have uh, in their synaptic termini vesicles filled with neurotransmitters, and we're talking about signaling via the neuromuscular junction. We're talking about the release of the uh, neurotransmitter acetylcholine. And when an action potential travels down a neuron, acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft, and acetylcholine binds acetylcholine receptors on the surface of muscle cells, which will signal into the muscle cells and, and regulate muscle contraction. So that's the signaling via the neuromuscular junction, a quick review from what you've learned in your freshman biology courses. In individuals who suffer from this autoimmune disorder, myasthenia gravis, those individuals make antibodies that bind the acetylcholine receptor. So in this case, the autoantibodies bind acetylcholine receptors. So acetylcholine receptor is the autoantigen. In this instance, when antibody binds antigen, uh, or I should say when antibody binds receptor, it is not triggering the activation of the receptor. It's actually triggering the destruction of the receptor. These receptors become internalized into vesicles and destroyed. So individuals who make this antibody um, will have difficulty signaling their muscles to contract, difficulty in regulating muscle contraction because the antibody reduces the number of receptors on the surface of muscle cells. So you would say that in these individuals, the antibody is interfering with signaling. So the antibody is acting as an antagonist because it is interfering with the normal function of the receptor, inhibiting its ability to signal properly. So in these individuals, the more antibody they make, uh, the more difficulty they have in um, regulating muscle contraction. So some symptoms are muscle weakening, and you start to see that in the face, in the mouth, in the eyelid, um, then they progressively have difficulty um, digesting because of weakness in muscles um, involved in uh, uh, swallowing. Um, they eventually might have weakness in muscles involved in breathing, the diaphragm muscles and the rib muscles, which need to contract and relax in order to ventilate. And if you're unable to regulate the contraction of your um, lung, uh, your rib and your diaphragm muscles, then you won't be able to breathe and you could die uh, by uh, suffocation in that uh, instance. So this is a very serious uh, autoimmune disorder. Um, how can this be treated? Well, again, immunosuppressive drugs, not the greatest uh, treatment because they're gonna make you susceptible to infection, but this is a life-threatening autoimmune reaction. So anything that would interfere with the production of antibodies could be used to reduce the autoantibody level. Uh, another treatment which is somewhat effective is to boost the production of uh, acetylcholine, or I should say acetylcholine levels that are found in the synapse so that um, signaling can occur, more signaling can occur due to increased levels of acetylcholine that might compete between um, the acetylcholine levels and the antibody levels. So if you recall from um, freshman biology, there are enzymes that regulate levels of neurotransmitters. There is an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase, which removes acetylcholine from the synaptic cleft. So acetylcholine is released in the synaptic cleft, triggers binding to the receptor, but eventually that acetylcholine is cleared out of the synaptic cleft so that this can, um, acetylcholine can go out and then can be cleared and go out again. So individuals who have weakening of the signal, it would help them to have more acetylcholine in their synaptic cleft. So there are inhibitors of acetylcholine esterase, and when those are given, then acetylcholine um, levels in the synapse rise, which allow signaling to the muscle cells and which compete for the antibody binding. 
So that is another way to increase the signaling between the neuron and the muscle. That way it doesn't get rid of the autoantibodies, but it helps compete with the autoantibodies. So these are two instances of autoimmune um, disorders, type 2, that involve antibodies binding receptors to the surface of the cells. And sometimes those receptors could be triggered, and that would be a uh, agonist, or sometimes these receptors could be interfered with, that would be an antagonist.